No, I think it's, you know, I, I, I think for me, it's, it's two perspective. I mean, one thing that I can say with the NBA program, it has had a lot of impact. I mean, you, you are, yeah. we have young kids, you know, youth and um, both girls and, and, and young boys and who, you know, it's a, it's, it's a community of young boys and girls who've actually never had the opportunity. And um, with this program coming into the kingdom, I mean, it just gave them a sense of hope and through sports that, you know, sports, one, it was that sports, um, it's just not all about, you know, just playing sports, but they started to see the opportunities through education and everything. So for me, um, there's two things, you know, having people like Joel who come into the kingdom and actually inspire these young people. And, you know, one of my biggest issues um, right now, you know, we have the whole gender um, based violence issue. Yeah. And, um, you know, my, I don't know whether it's a question or whether it is how do we actually go about it, you know, particularly concerning young boys, you know, um, right now, you know, I feel like with young girls, yes, um, it is a big problem when it comes to sports and everything. But given the situation, and perhaps not only in South Africa, but across the world, when you come to, you know, gender-based violence, it's like, how do we actually incorporate sports um, and make an impact for young boys in order to actually um, try and do away with the gender, you know, gender-based violence in order to equip young boys through sports and educate them that, you know, gender-based violence, it's, you know, it, it's a culture, but, you know, how do we break that cycle and how do we use sports in order to empower boys? Because it's a cultural thing. So for me, this is a great platform where we have people like Joel who can actually come and give, you know, a sense of hope and a sense of like changing the narrative and giving a voice of saying like, you know, it doesn't have to be like this. Not, you know, it's not about that women are not equal because you've been taught in this way. But I think when they are taught and when they hear from voices like yourself, Joel, um, it makes a huge difference. So for me right now, you know, being a single mother raising two young boys, my priority is really about like, how do I actually want to see my young boys in a society um, that is currently like so violent with, you know, gender based violence. But now how do we use sports in my kingdom to actually change that narrative to make a difference? Um, and that's from a boy's perspective, being a mother raising two boys. But at the same time, I think it's also a case of like inspiring the young women in the community through the basketball program that we have to say that, you know, it doesn't matter if you are a man or a woman, you still have the equal opportunities because you still have the talent. But now how are we going to change those narratives in order to make that impact and make the difference so that people can see that, you know, sport has got a thing, but what is the message going to come, you know, the message that's going to come out um, from that and how do we do it? Uh, I'll, I'll say it is, uh, I want to be sure that, that that was, that was more of a question directed at me or is, or, or, or was it more of a, a statement of what you were saying to him? I, I, I just wasn't sure if, if yes, I was yes. to, to respond. I think it's both a statement, but it's also a case of like somebody who has, you know, come from nowhere and basically made it in, you know, in, in the NBA where nobody was basically, you know, it was basically, it's not possible. So what I was just basically saying is like, how do we change the narrative through sports? Um, particularly for young boys, you know, and given the current status of what is happening with the, you know, gender-based violence, you know, for I think both women and, 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 and young, young boys and young women. It's like, how do we make the impact? You know, how do you tell oh, okay. your story? We want people like you to come forward and say it is possible, but, you know, there has to be a different narrative. Okay. Uh, so the, the definitely in terms of the, uh, the that narrative of uh, gender-based uh, violence, um, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously that that is a topic that you know, especially like now that is that is definitely trending. Like I've noticed uh, 
with uh, Instagram, especially with what I, I guess it, it started in it started in Turkey. There's people black and white photos uh, uh, that 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 they've been doing. Uh, I just recently uh, found out about that, um, and so I, I feel in in terms of uh, addressing that and using sports is um, because you have younger boys that are uh, are going to be more impressionable by um, uh, these, you know, the, these different athletes. So, you know, for, for someone like myself coming in and, you know, different athletes and other people that they may uh, either look up to or um, just may hold in, in a bit higher regard, um, have them, you know, explain, like, along with, you know, a, as you said, like, explaining that, you know, there is hope for, you know, opportunity of, of playing and having success um, no matter where you come from, but also in terms of how you, you know, I, I guess it, 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 it's, it's more towards the, uh, you know, when you're talking about off the court where obviously, you know, on the court, you want to, you want them to be able to have success as, as players and be able to develop, but off the court in terms of the right way to, you know, the right way to act, the right way to go about things. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if you were here uh, earlier, but I had spoken about one of my uh, coaches that, you know, he was uh, a male figure that had an extremely big influence on me. And um, I've, I've had, you know, another coach, another coach as well that, that had a pretty big influence when I think about it now um, on me off the court. And I, and even though we, they, there wasn't really any conversations uh, between us in terms of how exactly to act sometimes, sometimes I would just pick up on things that they did. And so their example was, was the teaching for me. And so I feel for, for these young boys that, you know, you want them to develop into, uh, you know, good young men. Uh, it's, it's to have, you know, people that are going to be around that are going to influence them to, you know, do the right thing and understand that, you know, when you, when, especially when it comes to, and what we're talking about gender-based violence, that, you know, that that's something that, that isn't accepted. And not just that, you know, it isn't, you know, it, it's something that has to be taken completely out where, you know, like personally, I, I was, you know, I, I, I was growing up around the people that, that I've been around when it comes to, to that, uh, to, you know, to, to that topic and, and that subject, it was something that was, you know, extremely looked, 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 looked down upon where with uh, amongst, us as like boys, boys, and eventually men, you know, you, you understood it was something that, that you do not do. And, and we, we, we held people accountable that, you know, we felt even if like there was a possibility of them thinking something like that, that, you know, that wasn't okay. And so that that's kind of what, you know, what, what I think would, would be, you know, one of the best ways to, to go about it where you're trying to educate these young boys of, yes, you know, you know, having success on the court is important, but as you talk to them about off the court, um, when it comes to that, they that they have to understand from you know these people that they're talking to that, um, you know, you know any type of violence, you know, like but you know violence in general, but especially violence towards women is something that you know is 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 just you know like absolutely unacceptable. It's not even something that oh you can't really do it or you know, like, no, like, they, like, people have to really understand that this is something that you could, you know, you, you could, cannot, you know, ever, you know, like, ever do. And, you know, also, because when, when you talk about, you know, the culture, there has to be a culture where, like, if, if, it, if it is ever seen, that there is definitely an example made of, you know, consequences for, for that type of action, because, you know, they, they have to understand that this isn't okay. And I just feel that, with um, the different, uh, you know, different players that, you know, like I said, that they may look up to and they are more impressionable at a young age, that that message will be able to come in um, a lot strongly from, uh, uh, from them and, you know, hopefully have, have a greater uh, impact. And uh, we still have 10 minutes before we wrap up. I want to ask a coach, Pierre, with um, all the women-based uh, Women, uh, violence towards women, uh, gender-based violence, actually, and um, also all the Me Too movement. As a coach who also coach women, how do you you go on? How do you ever feel like, hey, I don't want to be in trouble. I might be accused of this or that. Or how do you handle 
coaching women, knowing with everything that is happening. You know, when you heard Simon Biles, what she went through, and um, many other girls uh, in this gymnastic, in basketball, in, 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 in women's soccer, who um, experience yeah, that's also kind of violence, you know, being raped or all that, or being harassed by your coach. How do you draw the line as a coach when you coach women and young girls? The, the, the thing is, everyone's talking about gender, gender, and I just want to tell them when you're a coach, you're coaching human beings. And that's the most important part. And that if you start thinking, okay, I can't do that because it's a woman or because it's a man, well, first of all, it's a human being. And how would you want to treat this human being all the time? Human beings need love. Human beings need caring. Human beings need to be appreciated. And I think that that's going back to you're saying, how can you get them to come and play sports? Well, they got to have to understand that I can do something because I'm progressing. I'm becoming a better person. Um, I'm becoming uh, and I'm having fun and I'm learning a lot of things. And that I think is the most important part so that every day when they come into that, wherever you are, whatever sport you're doing, they have to have to understand that one, there are rules just like in life. It's a human being life. It's just, these are basketball rules. And what Joel was saying about the ever, forever, ever, it's like, no, there are things that you cannot even fathom thinking about doing. There are mm -hmm. do's and don'ts. It's, this is just the way it is here. And one thing also has to be changed is don't the old do as I say, not as I do. No, we all have to be examples. We have to be mm -hmm. the example to start with so that the, kids come in and see or women or men or whoever the human beings and they say how did you get here i asked joel how did he get there what did he have to do and he surpassed himself he surpassed what everybody else thought that he could do to become the man the champion that has become and they understand that there's only one way it's no pass get through get out of jail card go this way underneath because that's what everyone wants is a shortcut and it's no shortcut this is all about going the right way, going down the right path, taking somebody with you. And if I take somebody with me and he takes somebody with him and then he takes someone with him, all of a sudden there's two of us and there's four, and there's eight and 10 and 12. But the first person that has to take is yourself. Me as a coach, I have to be example. I have to be able to show them that this is the way things are done. I have to be able to explain to them why these are the things that have to be done. And like you said, Babs, in the end, maybe during it's the hardest thing in the world, but at the end of the road, you'll be the better person, you'll be a stronger person, you'll be a smarter person, and you'll say, gosh, I used to be there, and now I'm here. Thank you, coach. And that's what you always say. And as far as the girls or guys or whatever, I just make them understand that I want them to be the best person that they want to be or can be in their life. That's all. Might not be Michael Jordan, might not be LeBron James, might not be whoever, but you're going to be the LeBron James of your life. You're going to be the best that you can ever be, and you're going to be the strongest person. You're going to be the fastest that you ever thought you could be. And that's what I want to get you out. And I want them to challenge me as a coach to say, Coach, I did it. And I would always come back and say, Good, now do two more. And then now to do four. And it was never, ever. And he's like, You're never satisfied. I'm like, Yes, I am. Of course I'm satisfied. I just don't want you to become satisfied and sit back and say, Oh, I'm good. No, you're never good. Because there's always someone out there working harder better than you are and now i have to understand that that old crossroads when you get to that crossroad and it's between you and him and that's what it was between uh and when he was in miami he didn't know if he's gonna get cut or that it was gonna be you or him some of that make sure it's always you that wins and that winning is giving 100 percent all the time and when i say that all the time it's like never cheating never cheating and as far as what the, you said last night about women Women, and when you tell them what to do, and me as a coach, just remember what you told them and what to do, because they're going to do it. And that's all they want to be, though, is to be told exactly what you want me to do, and I'll do it. And you can get the best out of all of them, because when you do it, and they realize that, okay, coach, you told me to do it, and then the result is, hey, I did get better. I guess I'll do it another chance, and you get another go round, and you get another go round. And that's why I always say, as a coach, you just have to understand there are human beings in front of you. And I have a daughter and I have a son and I treat everyone just like it's my daughter and my son. And I've always told you, and you even know the same thing. When you're on my team, my mm -hmm. telephone for my son. 